This no-bake spiderweb chocolate tart is delicious and has the cutest little spiders you've ever seen. Hello everyone, we're starting off with the base. That's one and a half cups of Oreo cookie crumbs, four tablespoons of butter that's been melted. Stir those things together until combined and then take those buttery cookie crumbs and place them in the bottom of a pan. Now the original recipe where I found this asks for a tart pan that has a removable bottom and that gives you a nice pretty fluted edge all the way around. I have a tart pan but it does not have a removable bottom so I decided to use my nine inch spring form pan that I usually use for cheesecakes and what I did is I just put the crumbs in the bottom and I patted them down so they were nice and flat and even. If you'd like, if you'd like to have a raised chocolate edge, you can move those crumbs up the sides of the pan a little bit. But I like the three layer effect you get by just putting the cookie crumbs in flat. Now apparently the day I made this, I was a bit distracted because the recipe clearly says six ounces of cream cheese and I decided to put the whole package in. I put eight ounces of cream cheese. Also make sure your cream cheese is at room temperature. Mine was still a little bit cool out of the refrigerator. So blend up your cream cheese, whether you're using six or eight ounces, just so that it's nice and smooth. Then you're gonna add in one quarter cup of sugar and a half a teaspoon of a vanilla extract. Stir that up together and you're also supposed to add in a tablespoon of milk. And I completely left that out too. I tell you, I wasn't paying attention that day. Then blend in a quarter cup of unsweetened baking cocoa and continue to blend until it's nice and smooth, as you can see here. Now at this point, you're supposed to fold in two cups of Cool Whip whipped topping. Now I found as I tried to start to fold this in that the chocolate cream cheese mixture was way too thick and way too stiff to fold. It just wasn't happening with a spatula. Could be that I, because I forgot to add in that tablespoon of milk, could be the fact that my cream cheese wasn't warm enough. Regardless, I was having a hard time folding it in. So I used my electric mixer on low to blend in the Cool Whip. And I found after I was done that maybe it probably isn't as fluffy as it should be because it's supposed to be like a mousse. So to try to fix things, I added in another three quarters of a cup of Cool Whip and then I was able to fold that in nicely and it lightened up the mixture and made it really, really creamy and really light. And then I put it in to the spring form pan over top of the crust and then spread it out evenly. Now you need a chocolate ganache. That is three ounces of semi-treat chocolate chips. I poured a quarter cup of hot cream over top, let it sit for a few minutes and then just stirred it until you, you got a very nice, shiny, smooth mixture. Pour that on top of the cream cheese layer and then spread it out as smoothly as you can. I used a an offset spatula to do that. Just try to get it nice and smooth. And then finally for the spider web on top, that is two ounces of white chocolate. In this case, it's white candy melts, which is pretty much the same thing. And a tablespoon of whipping cream. And then I microwaved it in 15 second intervals until I was able to stir it smooth. Put it in a piping bag that I made a very small opening on the end of, and then just put it on top of the chocolate layer in a spiral pattern. All the way around. And once your spiral is done, take a toothpick and just drag through the lines and it'll make a nice spider web kind of pattern. Now I suggest you make as many lines as you want to have pieces in your finished tart. Now for the spiders, I made the legs first. I took a piece of paper, drew some V shapes with a marker, put the paper underneath some waxed paper and then melted some orange candy melts, put them in a Ziploc bag with a little hole cut out in the corner, and then just drew the little spider legs. And you should probably make more spider legs than you think you'll need because these can be a little bit delicate and you're probably gonna break a few of them. Try to make them as thin as you can, but just keep in mind, the thinner they are, the more delicate they will be. Then take just a regular orange candy melt wafer, take a leg, dip the end of the leg into some melted orange candy melt, and then just, attach it to the wafer and 
you sh should have to press and hold just a couple of seconds and it should be fine. I put four on each side, let them harden. And then I took a little bit of black frosting and just added two little dots for eyes. Now you have to pick these up by the body. If you pick them up by the legs, they're just gonna break off. So don't decorate your little tart until you're completely done and you're ready to serve this. And then you can put as many spiders on there as you'd like, or as few. This tart is delicious, even though I kind of messed up the filling, the filling was absolutely delicious. So whether you use the full eight ounces or only six and so on, follow my version or the original website version, you're gonna end up with a delicious tart, great Oreo crust, delicious creamy filling, lovely chocolate ganache, and adorable little spiders on top. Make sure you store this in the refrigerator, otherwise it gets very, very soft. Now, here's a throwback from 2008. This is when I first started off with YouTube and is one of my very, very first videos. The video quality is terrible. You don't hear me talking in it, but you know what? They're really cute bat cupcakes. So if you're looking for a great little cupcake to make for a kid's party, these are really cute and easy to make. So if you want to see this particular video, some vintage Yo-Yo Max 12, go ahead and click on your screen or look for the link in the description box. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed them. Yo-Yo Max 12.